Welcome to another edition of Raging Chicken Radio's Out to Coop podcast. It is May 3rd, and it is Indiana primary day, folks. Huge day, uh, both in the Republican and Democratic campaigns. Um, so for Out the Coop podcast, for those tuning in for the first time, it's like each week we check in with our capital correspondent, Sean Kitchen, on the good, the bad, and the ugly that is Harrisburg, PA. We're now on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. We are on Google Play Music, and we are on Podbean, folks. Uh, this podcast is going everywhere. So subscribe to the podcast and give us a feedback. And I really want to put in a plug in for that. Look, uh, we've got a number of people that are, are tuning in, that are kind of listening. Please make sure... Uh, that you, you just leave us some feedback, right? That you like it, that you subscribe to it. Even if you can't listen to it every single day, subscribe to the podcast and it gets us up in the rankings and gets this podcast out to more people. Uh, we really, really appreciate your help. Um, Raging Chicken Radio is a project of Raging Chicken Press. My name is Kevin Mahoney. I am the editor and founder of Raging Chicken Press. And check out all our citizen journalism at ragingchickenpress.org. And if you like what you see there, if you like this podcast, well, you click on the support membership tab at the top of the page, you become a member for as little as $5 a month. And now with this podcast too as well, um, being on Podbean, we're also going to have a, uh, a kind of a membership type uh, sponsorship uh, through Podbean too as well. We'll have some gifts for you too as well. So if you become a member, you get some stuff that's kind of pretty cool. Also, if you are interested in contributing to Raging Chicken Press, if you are an aspiring citizen journalist, just drop us an email at ragingchickenpress at gmail.com or send us a direct message on Twitter. We're at RC Press on Twitter. Um, we began Raging Chicken Press almost five years ago to provide a platform for homegrown progressive citizen journalism and media activism. So if you've got something to say, if you just want to learn how to do this work, drop us an email at ragingchickenpress at gmail.com and let's get started. Um, so before we get into a lot of the details today, I'd like to uh, kind of say thank you to uh, Marlena Eck over at Lehigh Valley Vanguard. Um, she had me on on Sunday night. Uh, I was part of a panel with uh, Max Vas Vasquez, uh, Rizzo Mertz, and Michael Frasetto, and we we're talking about uh, May Day, right? It was May 1st, so we we're actually talking about May Day, some of the histories of May Day. Um, but most importantly, I think uh, what was great about that conversation is we we're talking about the struggles looking forward and the need to get back to you, some real kind of direct action, labor organizing, and community organizing, and expanding um, what we understand to be the struggles for the 21st century. So go check them out at the Lehigh Valley Vanguard Live. Um, we'll um, include a link in the show notes today um, and on the site when this uh, when this goes up. Um, but today, on Indiana Primary Day, um, we are we'll talk a little about that in our second segment here. But first off, um, I really want to kind of get into and Sean and I were kind of uh, been batting this around for a couple of days. Been telling me about this story um, that's going to be uh, coming out of the, the Pennsylvania primary. Um, so uh, welcome, Sean. How you doing out there? I'm doing great. How are you? Hey, you know, I'm uh, I'm hanging in there. You know, it's Tuesday. It's rainy. It's Pennsylvania. You know, here we are. <laughs> yep, it, we're 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 in the rainy season now of spring. Yeah, the rainy sea. Yeah, that's exactly what it seems like. Apparently, it's going to be like this all week. So, hey, let me let me let me kind of like lay this ground for you. So, um, you got this piece that you're that that's going up on Raging Chicken Press today, um, and it's about Katie McGinty. And then just to set the context uh, for everybody out there, if everybody knows, Katie McGinty won the Democratic nomination for the Pennsylvania State Senator um, in last week's Pennsylvania Democratic primary. Um, and here you have Sean Kitchen um, starting off uh, this piece, and I just want to read it to everybody for context. So in the 2014, this is directly from the article, quote, in the 2014 gubernatorial primary, Katie McGinty came under scrutiny for $120,000 in campaign contributions from coal company owner Ray Bologna Sr., after, and after reviewing McGinty's federal campaign finance reports, Ray Bologna Sr. and his family donated $21,600 to McGinty's Senate campaign. State Impact NPR reported that in 20, or 2005, Katie McGinty, then Department of uh, Environmental Protection Secretary under Governor Ed Rendell, played an important role in expediting the permit for coal waste or coke power plant owned by Ray Bologna Sr. So that is part of a little bit of the context. So, Sean, you know, what has this got to do with the price of tea in China? I mean, why this article on McGinty now? Uh, what's going on? 
Well, um, you know, Katie McGinty has stated in the past she does not believe that uh, money influences politics. We've heard her say that live at the Keystone uh, Progressive Summit two years ago uh, during the gubernatorial primary debate. And um, here she, here we have it in 2014, as, as she was saying that, or during that time, uh, she received $120,000 from Ray, Ray Bologna Sr. out of Western Pennsylvania. Um, he owns a bunch of power plants or he's a coal company owner, a bunch of little coal companies in his little fiefdom out in like Washington County. And um, <laughs> yeah, she, and so um, in 2005, as she was Department of Environmental Protection Secretary, um, there's communications going back and forth between her and her field offices on getting this permit um, expedited. And also a state senator from that area, Democratic uh, state senator, Barry Stout was also involved in this, and he was pleased that this um, project was getting permitted. And this happened just as the EPA was implementing stricter air quality regulations. So she tried to get this in through uh, before um, the EPA's uh, implementation of stricter air quality standards in 2005. So basically, so you've got... Um McGinty, um, you know, and you've reported on this before, I mean, McGinty's connection with the natural gas industry is, is pretty tight. And actually, I was looking back over some of the uh, the statements that she made and some of the arguments from even the PA Progressive Summit um, debate from during the gubernatorial race was that she was basically looking at natural gas as really being uh, the economic driver for job creation. And she put that at the center of her campaign and she seemed to change her tone a little bit now. So what, what do you see as the impact of this reporting that you're doing now? Well, um, it, it shows you how the uh, natural gas industry and fossil fuels are influencing her campaign. Um, her campaign manager at the time in 2014 was Mike Micus. Um, and Mike Micus then after that, went on to uh, remember uh, President or Governor Wolf started his Fresh Start campaign pack. Mm -hmm. um, he was the head of the uh, that political action committee under governor for Governor Wolf's team, you know, his of his establishment uh, or his like his his bench, essentially. Mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, Mike is, uh, is Katie McGinty's Senate, Senate uh, campaign director um, before he became um, his time in politics, he was working in a bunch of environmental positions, and he was he was um, a lobbyist or a director for a um, front group supporting natural gas in western Pennsylvania in the John, John, Johnstown area. So you basically. So basically, what we're saying, we're seeing here, then, is that you're seeing a continuation as, of. Mm -hmm. You're seeing the continuation of her connection to the gas industry and to the uh, fossil fuels industry. And here we, but we still have a candidate who does not believe that money influences politics. Well, I mean, money, to, and, and you, so she's not thinking money influences politics, right? Um, or another way, because, you know, one of the things that always gets gets tricky about that discussion, right? This, we see this at the presidential level, too, as well, when Bernie Sanders talking about money and politics and so on, and Hillary Clinton saying, I've never been influenced. And, you know, there's been those folks that say, look, if the issue is not about like tit for tat, right? It's not about, um, you know, um, quid pro quo where you're saying, okay, here's the money. Now you're going to get this, now you're going to get this permit, right? And it's going to one for another, but rather that, but you can see these that are the table. people what, that, or, or even more so it tells you a little about, these are the people that are in the room to begin with, right? Yeah. Is that the money is going to these candidates from these companies, um, not simply so so they can buy one particular thing. It's because they believe that this is the person that is most likely going to support their agenda. And what you've kind of shown in this, you know, in this report, we kind of going back, remind us a little about the past campaign and making these connections um, to what's happening now in the in the McGinty campaign is that um, those people are still in the room, right? Yes. And that money and, is still coming in. Yes, and out of the three Democratic uh, senator Senate primary candidates. McGinty was the only one not to take a stand on natural gas development or um, take a stand on some sort of ban or moratorium on gas drilling after we have seen some of the pollution that has happened. 
Right. She seems to be trying to do that same kind of sidestep that Hillary Clinton was doing in the campaign, which is, you know, after all the regulations that I'm going to require them to do it, you know, only safe fracking will happen. And that if local if local communities want to ban it, well, then they can do it. It's a nice little skirt around that issue about whether we should be moving in fracking. And if you look at, you know, people like, you know, Naomi Klein, for example, her like absolutely, you know, phenomenal book, This Changes Everything. And she's pointed out in interview after interview since then. Bill McKibben has also come out and talked about this too, as well as basically saying, look, there, we don't have time for transition fuels, right? We don't have time for this whole, you know, that was something, you know, maybe like eight years ago that people were kind of thinking was, hey, this is a nice little bridge where we can still take money from the oil industry, um, but try to move towards a clean future. But we're seeing with fracking is that's not that's not the case at all because the kind of expenditure um, of of you know the carbon emissions that come from the process itself is just is off the charts. So even by giving us that little bit of a leeway and say hey you know look we're gonna put regulations on it that doesn't seem to be enough um, and yet she's trying to skirt that issue again. Exactly, and um, it's gonna be interesting uh, later on in the week. I'll have more coming out. On McGinty's relationship to the unnatural gas and the fossil fuels industry, and it's something that we should be concerned about. I mean, we're sending. I mean, she's the best. You know, in the eyes of Pennsylvania Democrats, she was the best choice, and we have to hold her. We we have to push her on that. You know? Yeah, I think I think, and I think this is we're coming up to a break. But I, maybe after the break, we want to get into a little bit about the Indiana primary and the campaigns and stuff. But after the break, maybe we can start off with. Um, Talk a little bit about you know uh, the the pressure that a lot of folks uh, on the left are coming under right now, um, or liberals or whatever, Democrats who people who voted in the Democratic primaries, um, basically you know to you know bring the party together and not talk bad about people like McGinty or something like that. But I think a lot of the claims of that you're making in this report and by shining a light on some of the things um, that that you're doing and others are doing um, about McGinty's relationship with the natural gas industry or big oil and that kind of thing um, is being seen by some kind of Democratic insiders as, you know, being negative and hurting her chances. But when we come back after the break, we'll talk a little bit about why why do this right why do you want to keep the pressure on so this is uh raging chicken radios out to coop podcast i'm here with sean kitchen once again today it is may 3rd and when we come back from the break we'll get right into indiana primary and thinking a little bit about why do you want to hold democrats feet to the fire this is raging chicken radio out to coop Welcome back to Raging Chicken Radio's Out to Coop podcast. My name is Kevin Mahoney. I am the editor and founder of Raging Chicken Press, and I'm here once again with Sean Kitchen. Uh, Sean Kitchen is our capital correspondent and assistant editor. Um, right before the break, uh, we were talking a little about Katie McGinty's campaign. I mean, Katie McGinty won the Pennsylvania primary, Democratic primary, um, um, just this past week. Um, um, both of us, we've basically been pretty clear, but, you know, both of us were um, supporters of John Fetterman, um, which, you know, the Sustac people don't like that too much because you know, they're crying nader on us. But whatever, you know, that is what it is. You know, uh, we're, we're looking at the future of the party. So, Sean, um, let me let me ask you this. So uh, this is, you know, this is common. This is not specific to this race or whatever. Um, but there's all these calls after a primary campaign, there's all these calls, um, from parties and we'll kind of focus on the democratic party right now. They're going to say, now it's time to unify the party. And then there's a increased pressure to, uh, especially from progressive journalists or people on the progressive side of things, um, to not criticize, um, the can you know, the campaign or the candidate who's been, um, elected or nominated, at least received the nomination. So uh, I'm sure people are going to look at your report. They're going to look at you drawing attention to, uh, Katie McGinty's ties to the natural gas industry. They're taking money, raising that issue about money and politics all over again. And they're going to say, stop it. You know, you're hurting Katie's chances of getting elected. Um, yet you don't see it quite that way, or you don't see that as at least the role of kind of what you're doing here. So talk to us a little bit. How do you respond to those folks that are going to say that, you know, you're hurting Katie McGinty's chances? Tough shit. <laughs> so I mean, tough shit. Yeah, walk, go ahead go ahead no no i mean no it's it's tough shit i mean like we're you know we're okay so i know our philosophy is to try to get the best the most out of the candidate we can and it does not stop after primary pennsylvania primary day um it should be noted that we should be pushing her on these issues mm -hmm. she was the only candidate not to take a stand against the marcellus shale in the uh in the, in the democratic primary and now you know i'm really surprised no one's really looked into her campaign finance reports 
because it's really actually just pretty simple. You go on the, with the website, but it's also and you you, t you type in their name and boom, there's those there's like 20, 30 pages in. Um, there are the um, campaign donations from Ray Bologna Senior. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it's really easy to use uh, Excel and Control Find. You know, and just type in someone's name and boom, they pop up. You mean, right? wait, wait, you, mean you don't need like a degree and kind of forensic kind of reporting in order to find this stuff? No, you do not. But, um, and the second point is this, this continues the reporting that happened in 2014. Mm -hmm. And people should be made aware, hey, this happened in 2014 and it's still happening in 2016. How come they're not answering for it? Yeah, and how you know looks and you know look and you've got all the uh, you know the big money and the big party support that kind of threw in behind Katie McGinty too as well, uh, which again goes right to showing that you know look these ties to uh, kind of big oil, natural gas, the kind of carbon industry, um, you know this is not something that is just on the republic Republican side of things. I mean, if you were you know I, I look at you know if we're going to be accountable, one, to what's actually going on out there. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, everybody who, who reads Raging Chicken Press knows certainly that, you know, we're a progressive, activist-oriented, you know, um, site. But that doesn't mean that you, you know, you come around election time, you come, you come shills for the Democratic Party. It means that, you know, you're kind of coming at it with an angle, of kind of really seeing what's going on. And, you know, ultimately, I think on this question of, uh, you know, uh, the fossil fuel industry, uh, you got to be on the side of the planet, you know, and if the fact is that we've got a Democrat who's receiving fossil fuel money, right, that's got to be exposed, not so that we go kind of all kind of whine and cry and say there's not a perfect candidate. So therefore we go home, you know, and kick our feet and don't vote, but rather than use that as yet another organizing opportunity to kind of push and, that candidate forward. And like Katie McGinty has a track record going back to the 1990s, right, of supporting and doing these type of things for natural gas companies or for coal companies. I think one of the first reporting was from Salon.com, Jack Taper, mm -hmm. or Tapper, mm -hmm. and you know where he's at right now? No. CNN? Jack oh, Taper or whatever. that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh -huh. I mean, he's like one of the only hard-hitting reporters on CNN uh, by their standards. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he, in 2001, eviscerated Katie McGinty for being someone as incompetent and fast tracking a very serious um, incinerator uh, permit in Ohio that Drew Gibson has actually wrote about mm -hmm. for the Raging Chicken and for his blog and for his blog. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, she has a history of this. I mean, the reporting just doesn't stop because the, the primaries are over. So let me ask you this then. So I mean, how is it that that McGinty makes her case then? I mean, how does she make her case that she is this environmental uh, environmentalist that she is th that she's going to defend this? If we're seeing the kind of ties in the history um, that I mean, did she have some like you know come to Jesus of the woods moment or something? No, I, I don't think so. But I think she's the establishment candidate. She's getting backed by establishment Democratic organizations. Sierra Club, League of Conservation Voters, all these major environmental organizations. Governor Wolf, for that matter, right? Yeah, Governor Wolf. I mean, but it's, it's you know, what Bernie Sanders had during the primary about calling out the establishment, you know, political organizations. Mm -hmm. Like, well, look at the establishment environmental organization, Sierra Club. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the local level, they do great work. But nationally, these organizations are picking the safest candidate instead of the best candidate. And, you know, you're like you have all these donations from the natural gas and fossil fuels industry, coupled with all these organizations from the Sierra Club, League of Conservation Voters, and other sort of environmental groups. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you know, this... be advocating for the planet. And it's like, why is this happening? Well, you know, and again, you know, not to, you know, beat a dead polar bear, so to speak, but, you know, Naomi, Naomi Klein, this is exactly what she's arguing uh, again in... Um, and this changes everything, right? About the kind of big green organizations um, trying to, in a sense, play these kind of politics, right? To um, try to find somebody who's better than the other one. When really, we at this point, we need to be kind of throwing in big time to kind of stop any additional um, fossil fuel production, right? You know, the whole leave it in the ground movement is kind of, I think, really important. So, I mean, I, I, on that idea about kind of, you know, big money, big politics, and all that kind of stuff. Today is the Indiana primary. 
Um, and um, it looks like this is going to be, you know, really the big decision day because I mean, you know, if, if, if Clinton, if Clinton, um, although, well, if Clinton takes, uh, takes Indiana today, that makes it even more difficult for even Sanders campaign to make a case at all that they can kind of win the nomination. Although she's not going to be in Indiana tonight, she's going to be in Ohio. And there's some kind of internal reporting that's suggesting that, um, that they think they might lose Indiana. So that's going to be interesting to watch. But on the other side, Holy cow. <laughs> we have reached peak crazy. <laughs> My God. So what 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 do you think what do you think is gonna happen? You think Trump's gonna take Indiana tonight? Oh, I think he's gonna blow it out. But one of the best things I saw over the weekend was uh I mean there's a few good videos of Ted Cruz and Carly Fiorina, but I think I didn't get to see them. I saw the one where Ted Cruz is standing right up to the Trump supporter and saying, we are not building that wall. <laughs> like, <laughs> what does it mean when Ted Cruz is the voice of sanity, the voice of reason in the Republican party? I mean, he's not, but he just delivered like a truth bomb. He should just drop the mic and walk off stage after that. I mean, he just, he dropped the truth bomb on that guy and they, he, they're like, we're building that wall. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I tell you, the funniest thing about that video is that, you know, Cruz has got this style. He's a litigator, right? So he asked these kind of rhetorical questions, right? The best thing about the about some of the video of his his confronting the, the Trump supporters is he'd ask a rhetorical question, right? And wait, and then he was getting ready to follow up, but the Trump supporters would answer it in a way he's you know, like, I've been respectful. You know, I want to ask you a question. And they're like, we don't want you here. You know, like, you know it was the funniest back and forth I've seen. And then, you know, the, the Carly Fiorita thing is just, it's becoming a comedy of errors. I mean, the, there's like, you know, the viral video of the GIF of, of them trying to raise their hands next to one another. It's kind of like doing this kind of, I don't know, kind of weird hand jive crap. Something, like something <laughs> like couples would do. Oh my God. Couples who don't like each other, right? You know, like couples who are just kind of out there putting a show up like for the cameras where really they can't stand each other. That's what it looked like. And then... Like usually later that day or the next day, she falls off the stage. <laughs> right? I mean, you know, I mean, this is you know, if and that's not a metaphor for what's going on, it's crazy. Was that? Yeah, and and then he just keeps on shaking hands, like <laughs> <laughs> just like you know, if thank God that there was like people that caught her because you know he's just oblivious. It's just that is something else. And if you look at the look, one of my favorite things, you look at Ted Cruz's wife's face when she sees Fiorina go, right? It just like she's like. Oh my god! Like this, like this is like horror. You can see at that moment she's like, "This is the campaign," you know, <laughs> falling off the stage. No, like the one thing is, uh, they this is the best reality TV show money can buy. I mean, it really is. It, it's something I look forward to every four years. I mean, they're, 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 that that's the next step. There, someone's going to actually do an actual reality TV show. And just avoids like following the Trump campaign around or something like that. I mean, like prime time, half an hour every Wednesday night on ABC or NBC. Boom, just do it. Like just at, at this point. Well, I'm I'm looking at it like this. I mean, like if the republic. I mean, look, there are Republicans now, like some strategists, and you know, there's I, you know, I've seen this increasingly um, coming out, um, and they're voicing this publicly now. That um, Freeing her last name is like hair or her, but there was a woman talking about this last night on uh, Lawrence O'Donnell show, and she's basically saying like, "Look, you know, this we're, everything's going off the rails, right?" And then, <laughs> and she was, you know, had no kind words for Trump whatsoever, and they was basically fully expected that this is going to tank the Republicans um, in this election, and they're going to lose big. But you know, I'm almost thinking like, unless unless they get their head around that. Next time around, I say, like, forget Republican Party stuff. Like, just team up with MP MTV, have open auditions, right, for, you know, who's the best people to get on this reality TV show and, and do it that way. Because this is, you know, th this is this is insane. And I'll tell you, next time around, um, if they pull this garbage again, I, I don't think we should be footing the bill for this, <laughs> right? Footing the bill for, you know, for, forget what the primary in Pennsylvania costs, some million dollars, dollars something like this, to, to, or across the country, to you know, $20 million, I think is the number that I heard, to kind of run these primaries. And it's just taxpayer-funded stuff. And these are private political parties. So, you know, do it on your own dime, free marketeers. You know, that's all I got to say. Anyways, we're coming up right to a break. Um, and after the break, we're going to come back with some kind of closing thoughts on the day. Uh, you know, it's just uh, Indiana primary is just going to be crazy. I'm just I'm just looking forward to it. This is Kevin Mahoney. This is Out the Coop Podcast. We'll be back right after this. 
Welcome back to Raging Chicken Radio's Out to Coop podcast. I'm Kevin Mahoney, editor and founder of Raging Chicken Press, and I'm here once again with Sean Kitchen, our capital correspondent, capital as in Harrisburg, PA. So uh, we'll do a couple little things to kind of close things out today. Is like um, Number one, uh, I want to kind of you know put a plug in once again, is that we have this podcast now is up on Podbean, um, we're on iTunes, we're on Stitcher, we're on Google, uh, Google Music, Google Play Music. Um, that's kind of our newest edition. Um, what I really encourage anybody if you like what you're hearing right you like this back and forth you want to see this podcast grow make sure that you subscribe to those um at any one of those sites and you know please like it give us uh share it on facebook share it on twitter um and leave us a comment most of month you leave us the comment you like it on those things it puts us up in the ratings and helps get this podcast out to a broader audience we really appreciate your help and i also want to you know i was really thrilled i don't know uh how many of you saw this but Last week, um, I did a, a, a Facebook Live video, and uh, we're going to be making more use of that um, on our Facebook page. I did a Facebook page, uh, Facebook Live video, um, talking about some of the things that we have planned for um, for the podcast coming up, and one of them in particular is, you know, to set up these different segments that we add on to this one. So we have, you know, Out to Coop with Sean is really going to be the core of the podcast at this point. Um, but we'd like to kind of add in like a second half an hour um, each week, right? So something different each week. And some of the, we'd like to have a focus on one of those segments. The ideas that we had was on on craft beer in Pennsylvania. Um, not the kind of, you know, just the snobbish garbage that you get in a lot of craft beer circles, but really focused on the industry and, you know, kind of how a lot of what you see with craft beer is that, you know, um, drawing from um, local ingredients, um, uh, commitments to state sustainability, um, and increasingly uh, kind of a focus on the kind of labor conditions that are around that, right? Kind of mimicking what you see, you saw in the slow food movement, right? Um, at the early part of the 21st century, late 21st, 20th century, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's cool. Um, also having a segment called the sit down, which will kind of talk to Pennsylvania public intellectuals, um, particularly those folks at the uh, Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education Universities, but 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 PA universities more generally, um, who are looking at some of the history of progressive activism in this state, looking at some of the histories of labor in the state, um, talking about um, the politics and the theories behind progressive change, and trying to shine a light on the amazing work that's already going on here, um, and to kind of add another dimension here. We've got a bunch of other things planned too as well. What's been great about the Facebook Live thing is we've been um, getting some feedback. We already got like three, four, five, six emails uh, from people with different ideas saying that they're expressing interest in wanting to come on the podcast, maybe um, kind of write for Raging Chicken Press too as well. So that's been well, that's been pretty good. So, you know, uh, thanks you all. And then um, you, you're going to see another plug for this on Facebook Live too as well. So um, please leave us comments and join in. And if you want to write, for Raging Chicken Press, so like I will help you out with that, right? Um, Sean is a great resource too as well, and uh, we'll help you get started in doing some fantastic investigative, uh, kind of hard-hitting citizen media. So just email us at ragingchickenpress at gmail.com um, and uh, we'll help you get started. So uh, Sean, I'm just curious about, you know, how you're thinking about uh, the future of the podcast and what you'd like to see uh, kind of in the weeks and months ahead. No, I think it's um, I think I think it's going to be pretty fun. Uh, you know, we're hitting our stride here. Um, this is actually like something we've been talking about again for a few years. And you know, I think what a couple of years ago, I had that like raging chicken interviews type of thing going on where mm -hmm. we were interviewing some people for a half an hour, uh, forty five minutes at a time. And I think it's really cool bringing that in and the pot potential that that has. I mean, we can get in contact with people from, say, like down south or across the country and put that into a short like little podcast and talk about the environmental issues happening in the local level, say in California or Arkansas, where oil spills happen, or um, you know, talk to Steve Horn again about like the he's like the fracking resource and bring that <clears throat> into uh, what's happening in Pennsylvania politics, you know. I think I think we have the opportunity to bring that type of reporting into it, like more of like a local uh, it's something that's entertaining, but also talks about uh, you bringing these folks, activists or writers, to talk about on like a local scale. Uh, I agree. And, you know, and I think that one of the things, uh, and you make me think, you know, I, I should also say there's folks out there, there's an issue that's happening in your community or so on, shoot us a line, right? I mean, we'd love to uh, write about stuff that's happening in the community, especially the activist work that's going on or some major corruption scandal, that kind of stuff. We'd love to be, um, um, to kind of dig into some of that stuff um, on Raging Chicken Press, but then also maybe even bring folks onto the podcast to expand that. And one of the things that too as well that we hope to do in the, in, you know, in the, in the weeks and months down the road, is kind of further build out our connections with some 
some other um, some other outlets. So, for example, um, you know, Rick Smith show has um, kind of amazing stuff on, kind of labor focused stuff on, um, and we'd love to you know keep on plugging those folks. Um, Lehigh Valley Vanguard, right? Marlena Eck, um, both the publication and the Lehigh Valley Vanguard Live, uh, which is a kind of uh, biweekly show um, up on YouTube. Um, this is just really, really great work that's going on, and we want to kind of strengthen that kind of network to really build that progressive media infrastructure. So, um, so Sean, you know, I'm just I, I agree. I think we're you know hitting a stride. It's been feeling good. This has been a lot of fun, and um, I really hope that uh, folks will you know do exactly what I was saying before. You know, please uh, like us, uh, like us on Facebook, um, share this podcast. Uh, leave us a review, um, subscribe to it so we can get up there up in the ratings and help us even further. And like I'll say too, as well as, you know, if you can, uh, you really like what we're doing here, you like what we're doing, Raging Chicken Press, go to the support and membership tab at ragingchickenpress.org um, um, and click on that. You can become a member for as little as $5 a month. Um, and I can't tell you how much that hates us, uh, that, that helps us out. And, uh, you know, frankly, we're going to be needing some kind of technological upgrades um, coming pretty soon if we want to expand this podcast. Um, we're probably going to need a little bit more server space and that kind of stuff. And uh, really, the ultimate goal is really wanting to um, kind of support like people like Sean and other folks that write for Raging Shaker Press in a real material way. So uh, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to this every single week, Sean. This is like like one of the highlights of my weeks. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. Um, I, I enjoy doing it. It's we, we can have nice like little conversational pieces, but also keep it like nice and uh, relaxed at the same time. Absolutely. All right. So uh, that's going to do it for the May 3rd edition of Out to Coop Podcast. This is a project of Raging Chicken Press, Raging Chicken Radio's Out to Coop Podcast. So uh, we'll be back next week. And um, who knows what craziness we're going to find then. All right. Until then, this is Kevin Mahoney signing out. All right, great.